G'day everybody and welcome to Andrew's Art and Models. Today I have something a little bit different for you. I have a 170 second scale tank. Now I've done plenty of tanks and I've done plenty of 170 second scale vehicles, but I've never done a 170 second scale tank. And just to make it a little bit easier for myself, I decided to get some photo etch from ET Models for a late production Tiger one. And we're gonna use some of those parts uh, on this build. So, let's get on with this build it is fairly simple i skipped most of it uh, because it's quite a simple kit to put together there really aren't any fit issues it all goes together nicely and there's a couple of different options there too for different strum tigers so different uh, mortar and uh, different rear engine deck i fill in all the position holes on the vehicle and uh, we'll sand those back and that's just because i'm not 100 percent sure at this point what photo etch parts I'm going to be using and what kit parts I'm going to be using. So I get rid of all the locational holes on the hull and in the rear of the hull and uh, fill those in with the Tamiya putty. And uh, yeah, so we sand that back with 2000, uh, sorry, 1000 grit sandpaper and then 2000 grit sandpaper just to smooth it off. And uh, I'll spray that with the gray paint just to check it for any flaws or anything before we go. There's a few sink marks on the side of the uh, vehicle there. And uh, you see, I just pointed to them then and uh, those are easy enough filled though so yeah away we go So unlike on the box art, there is a surface detail on the box art picture, but there isn't surface detail on the part. So we're just going to add that with the Mr. Surfacer 1000 and an old brush. Just dab that on there to give us a little bit of a cast texture to some of these parts. Uh, you'll notice on the front there, if you buy this kit and build it, that uh, mine is built the way the instructions show, not how it shows on the actual box art itself. It is incorrect on the box. So if you're wondering which is correct, just follow the instructions and you'll be right. So you can see I don't have any complex uh, folding tools or anything like that for the photo etch and you don't look honestly don't really need them. Here I'm just removing some parts that I'm not going to bend over and you can see I've got the uh, really really complex photo etch bending tool there as a nice straight edge pair of tweezers. So, uh, these parts don't have to look 100% because we're going to make them look a little bit beaten up so they don't have to be uh, factory perfect so to speak but uh, yeah that little line on the side of the tank there is just a guideline from the um, kit piece just to show me exactly where I need to place them uh, right alongside the hull.
So you'll see there I've attached most of the photo edge pieces just using regular super glue. And here I'm using Tamiya Extra Thin Cement just to soften up the surface details there. But we're going to add a few little marks and lines and things using both sides of the little blade. And that's just to show where the metal's been cut uh, to form the, the front of the hull and the side of the hull. So those details are missing in the kit, but uh, they're easy enough added to the model. Alrighty, so we've done some of the post shading there. That's uh, done, or highlighting rather. That's just to vary up the surface a little bit. And we're using the Vallejo German Red Brown for the markings along with the green for the markings. And I use it at 20 PSI and I thin the paint down to 40% paint, 60% thinner. And I'm working very, very close to the surface. So with the dual action airbrush, I can control the air that I'm using. I can control the paint flow. And I use both of that along with the really thin paint just to get me nice and close to the surface and uh, really work out that camouflage detailing without having to mask the kit off. Okay, so it wouldn't be an Andrews Art and Model build without a little oops moment, and uh, that is provided to us by the tracks. So the drive sprocket there is really quite loose, and it's just because of the track tension over the top of it is too much. So on the, on the other side, it's fine. On this side, though, it needs adjusting. So I just take my little uh, drill out, drill a few little holes, and then use a clothespin secured in place with super glue just to strengthen up that joint. And once that's dry, I can uh, stretch over the uh, tracks and away we go.
So while I'm waiting for that to dry and just uh, set in place, I'm going to put the uh, pale sand colour up onto the wood parts on the vehicle. And once we're done with that, I'm going to put some super glue on top of the road wheels and put in, so you see here, I'm putting in the super glue and then put in some foam just to press the super glue, uh, sorry, press the track down onto the top of the road wheels and the super glue. So the track's obviously quite heavy in real life and it sags onto the uh, road wheels. So we're just trying to replicate that as best we can. And uh, this is an easy method uh, for doing it. So I've used the Humbrol enamel wash uh, really just to get started on the weathering. Um, this is my own mix and I really sort of just did it by eye. So it's just mixed with turpentine and uh, thinned to how I want it. After I've done this, I then go on with standard weathering. So I use the Tamiya panel liners and so on and so forth, really basic stuff. And keep it simple. I don't want a hugely dirty model. So uh, I'll keep it uh, relatively simple. Okay, so here we're just using a little bit of the uh, Tylung uh, 502 light sand just to uh, weather the surface a little bit more. This will help blend in the colours and fade them out a little bit and sort of ties it all in together. And uh, you can do this as much or as little as you want, it's really up to you. But uh, yeah, I like to do a little bit of it just to, just to fade out some of the uh, greens and the, and the browns.
So there we are, we've put on most of the pigments and I'm gonna do a little bit of paint chipping on the vehicle and uh, we're calling this one pretty much done. Uh, I am gonna be, well I'm planning to, hopefully I will, <laughs> have a diorama done for this one, a very simple basic diorama just to show it off and uh, that'll be available for the premium subscribers as well. Uh, this was a fun little kit, I highly recommend it. Uh, I'm gonna be doing a lot more little 170 second scale tanks, so I had so much fun making this thing. Uh, yeah, a little bit of chipping and away we go. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. We've got some photos of the completed model coming up. Uh, don't forget, this is a premium subscriber giveaway model and there is a list of the models available in the description below, uh, below for the premium subscribers. And that is only $11 to enter the draw, 11 US dollars to enter the draw for 2020. And uh, if you're unaware, you get your choice of kit, either built or unbuilt. And uh, they're listed, as I was saying, below. But yeah, thank you for watching and a huge thank you to everybody for all the feedback and comments and, and things that I'm getting. I love reading all the comments. Uh, I appreciate all the feedback as well. So keep them coming. And yeah, we'll see you with the next video.